Welcome to the What to Read Next podcast. In this podcast, your host, Lori and me, will invite a bookish guest to share their favorite book recommendation. If you share a passion for books and always looking for your next read, then join us. Hi, Aisley. Welcome to What to Read Next podcast. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm a romance booktuber. By night, by day, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, And I also help run a romance awareness group called Romance Sparks Joy, where we promote various underrepresented authors. Um, And we do like monthly book clubs and stuff. I'm one of the admins for that. So I feel like those are my two key points. (laughs) (laughs) That's exciting. So we're going to be chatting romance recommendations. Mm -hmm. First things first, what is your favorite romance drove? This was so hard. Like I saw this question. I was like, how do I pick? How do I pick? But I think it's got to be Grumpy Sunshine Mm -hmm. because Jackie Lau just announced her Grumpy Sunshine that has a female grumpy character Mm -hmm. and I like squealed. (laughs) I was so excited for it because we don't get female Grumpy Sunshines Mm -hmm. like at all. And I just love that dynamic of somebody who's just like not having it, but also is like, I'm going to let you be this like ray of sunshine in my life while Mm -hmm. I sit over here and pout. Did you read Chloe Lisa's um, Always Only You? Yes. Okay. Yes, I, I read that one. I liked that one. Yeah. yeah. He's a little grumpy. He's a little. He's sunshine. <laughs> so. It's just the best combo. Like, it feels so good. Like, when he's just like, I don't, I don't want to deal with this. <laughs> I love this. Um, so you're fond of audiobooks. So who are your favorite narrators and which books are excellent on audio? Oh, okay. So this is also hard because I don't feel like I, I think I'm a weird audiobook listener. And like 2020 for me has been the year of audiobooks mm-hmm. because I pick up my e reader and I just don't want to read. Mm-hmm. I put it down and I pick up my phone to doom scroll or to watch TikToks, <laughs> anything but actually reading. So audiobooks for me have been probably over 50% of my reading now. Mm -hmm. which is a lot. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And I feel like I don't actually pay that much attention to the narrators, except for when I notice I've listened to them in another book Mm. or when I hate them. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) But I did pick out favorites. Don't worry. I have you covered. I did pick out some favorites actually, but it's just like, I think the biggest key for audio is the narrator. If the narrator is not good, I'm not engaged and I'm dipping out so quickly. (laughs) Um. Yeah, I think narration's got to be, like, on point. And I don't know how many I put down because I was like, "Mm, no, we'll read this physically. I'm not going to call them out (laughs) by name either. (laughs) That's rude. But, yeah, I feel like I just – I love a good narrator, but I think there's so many. It's hard to be, like, these ones. I picked out a couple Mm -hmm. that I feel like stand out in my mind. And I can identify now, but not in a bad way. Okay. Um. So like Renee Rodman does the Kate Daniels series Mm -hmm. and she does the first chunk of the Hidden Legacy series. So the first three in that trilogy, she's like amazing. Her her male voices aren't bad Mm -hmm. because I do think, um, I don't know if other people struggle with, I feel like it's it's a struggle sometimes to listen to a male or a female do the opposite gender voice Mm -hmm. where you're like, no, that's something's off. Like, he's, like, a little too, like, gruff sounding still for the female. And, I mean, there's a whole range. It's just sometimes they just sound just off a little. Um, but I really, really like her narrations lately. And I've been living for Kate Daniels and the Hidden Legacy series this year. Mm-hmm. I caught up on all of Hidden Legacy almost. I'm saving it. I'm saving the last one because I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't be caught up yet. And then I'm re-listening to all of Kate Daniels right now and just le- living for her narration. And then, um, hold on. Um, I am a big fan of the Ice Planet Barbarian series. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much <laughs> you've talked about it on the podcast or. Yeah. It being full banana pants, um, I, I like to call it the full banana pants series. Those two narrators, uh, it's Mason Lloyd and Holly Jackson. They work really well together <laughs> and they really sell you on the blue alien. 
uh, <laughs> and the ridiculousness. Although Mason Lloyd can't say one of the words in a book he couldn't say. And like, it was really funny. I don't remember the word, but I just remember like every time he said it, cause like they made something to carry someone. And every time he said it, I was like, what, <laughs> what are you trying to say? So that's a case where like, you know, the book was great, but there was like a moment in the narration occasionally where you're like, huh, what are you saying to me? <laughs> what are you, what was the word? Oh, my brain. I can't remember the word. That's okay. I know. I was just like, you I know, wish my brain could pull it. We got to tune in and, walk and listen to the Banana Hands audio series. Definitely full trigger warnings for like really traumatic stuff at the beginning of the first book. But yeah. I do not believe that first book is representative of the whole series if you haven't read it. And okay. you do try it and you think like book one's a lot. That one's like basically processing the trauma of crash landing on a planet after being kidnapped. Um and then all the other books are them just kind of falling in love with weird blue alien men. <laughs> Who doesn't want a weird blue alien man? I mean, you know. Yeah, it sounds like amazing. So <laughs> awesome. So which authors are your autobi or which authors we should check out your backlist? Uh, this is also hard. <laughs> I have so many. Do you ask me the questions of things and I'm like, I have a million answers. Um, so I narrowed it down to like in the last year favorites. Mm-hmm. Um, I've read a lot this year already, so I was like, I think that's fair. But one this year that I've discovered recently and fell in love with, and I also kind of focused on ones I've listened to the audiobooks a lot on, mm-hmm. uh, Tracy Livesay, she has the Girls Trip series that started last year with um, Sweet Talk and Lover, mm-hmm. and then Like Lovers Do came out this year. And then I read a book by hers with Amnesia in it that I loved, and now I have become a Tracy Livesay fangirl. Mm-hmm. And I can't get enough of her books. Uh, the Girls Trip is especially great if you want the uh, strong female friendships happening and that being a focus of the story more so than, I mean, it's still a romance and there's still romance in it. Um, but I just love seeing the friend group. Like you see them in book one, you see them again in book two and you're just like, this friend group, this friend group is everything. Uh, and then let's see. Another one is Olivia Dade, who just had spoiler alert come out. I started reading Olivia Day last year, I think, and I've slowly been working through her backlist of self-published books for the body representation in them. Uh, I love how she talks about bodies of all various sizes and representations like from that and anxiety and mental health issues. It feels very real and accurate. Um, I don't personally have anxiety, but it sounds like everything my friends would <laughs> tell me it is. Like, if that makes sense, like, it, it, I feel like it's reflective of what I hear from people around me. And as far like, being us on the smaller plus size, the way she talks about bodies is just, it makes me feel so good. Mm-hmm. Like, it's so nice to walk out of a book and be like, oh, wow, I don't feel weird because I have a tummy or I like about any extra, ch- I don't know. Like, mm-hmm. you can walk out of so many books and just feel like you've, you're just like, oh, I'm never going to be this size six or whatever they are in a romance novel where she like really brings it and spoiler alert masterpiece cannot recommend it enough. If you haven't read it yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, now I have to pick, pick a number one through three. (laughs) What do you want? Three. Three. All right. Uh, I'm going to go with Alexis Daria Mm -hmm. who I loved her take the lead book. Mm -hmm. I haven't finished that series. So I was like holding off. I was like, I don't want to be done with her books. And then you had me. Oh, go ahead. Book two is no longer available, unfortunately. It's, I think I already own it. Okay, if you do, so hopefully it's still like, on my Kindle. Yeah. Yeah. I tried, I forgot to buy it and I went back to buy it and I'm like, it's no longer available. <laughs> That's disappointing. But I oh, take the lead was so like, I fell in love with her. I was like, I am buying anything else this woman writes. She is in my like auto buy author list. And then I read You Had Made Ola and I was like, Oh, we have positive representation of like just using lube. I was like, I love this. <laughs> I am very easy, please. I'm like, good body rep, good sex rep. I'm here for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, I love this. And let's do number one. Let's do another one. Uh, do you want one or two? Let's do it wherever you feel like. Um, I'm going to do a romantic suspense. So I really got into Alethea Romig this year. 
And she has the Sparrow web series that are all romantic suspenses. A lot of them, if you get to it before Audible Escape is gone, are on Audible Escape. Uh, they're all under like 10 hours. They're three book series. So you have cliffhangers at the end of each one. They're bonkers. And this is like a mob thing kind of protection agency situation. But they're all like romantic suspense. And I have been, at least this year, really leaning into bonkers and like the more uh I guess escapism <laughs> through like things being wild and that that whole series is super well narrated and kind of that like uh if you need something to pull you through a book like if you're kind of slumpy I feel like they're a great book because you're like you're gonna finish the first book and be like what wait a minute and then you're immediately diving into book two and then same thing for book three and then you're done and you're like life <laughs> what do I do with myself oh my gosh I have to read um I think staff from Stephanie from stuff Romans book talk um she yeah called, she basically like rave about Alicia's on writing she's like you need to read her <laughs> she's amazing so. yes I that's why I ended up reading it Steph was talking about the series and I literally was like you know I'm in a weird place I <laughs> listen to these and I don't know if I'm gonna like and now I'm like I'm pre-ordering every book and I'm I wait though I don't read her books until like the, right before the last one comes out I'll start diving in okay because I can't I, I don't want to wait yeah <laughs> I feel yeah so what are some of your five star reads uh this is so hard too when you read like a certain volume of books I feel like there comes a point where you're just like here's five stars for everything or you give none out <laughs> and I feel like I'm like everything gets five stars right now because if I'm reading it Generally, I'm enjoying it. Um, but recent ones that I really loved and I highly recommend are White Whiskey Bargain by Jody Slaughter. This is a slightly grumpy heroine who is possibly unlikable to some, but I found her very realistic and a cinnamon roll hero and they're bootleggers in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And it's so good. I, I kept putting this book off and I'm mad at myself that I waited. I was like, why did I wait? Um, another one is The Virgin and the Rogue by Sophie Jordan for historical. Mm -hmm. I love The Rogue Files by her so much. Uh, and then most recently, spoiler alert, by Olivia Dade got five stars because <laughs> how could it not? It was yeah. just like the perfect mix of everything for me. I love this. So let's talk about your fan of Pick It's Up Genre. What has been a book you read this past year that you love? So okay. Contemporary, historical, whatever subgenre. Yeah. I'm going to say something we've not talked about at all. I've, I figured I would keep, like, I'm trying to keep this, like, interesting so it's not the same, like, genres. Yeah. I'm going to pick gothic romance. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, which I don't think gets a lot of love. No. Uh, I think it's, like, an old-timey thing. But I read The Widow of Rose House by Diana Biller this year. And I feel like it's light gothic, kind of light romance, not too bad. But like, I mean, not like it's not you're not reading it in, like this is women's fiction. <laughs> you're reading it in like it's not heavy romance plot. Like it's a good balance of the two. And I loved that book. I I was shocked. <laughs> I didn't think I liked gothic, gothic romance. And now I'm out here like living for it. And I'm I want more. But like I want it written now, <laughs> not um, old. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, I would be able to read it on my Kindle and not have to go buy a bunch of used books. Yeah. But I'm probably going to have to resort to it at some point because this really fed the like spooky house vibes with with a cinnamon roll nerdy hero. Mm -hmm. So do you have any other cinnamon roll heroes, you know, recommendations? I know I'm putting you in the spot. <laughs> so. Give me two seconds and I have them for you. Yes. I did a whole video on cinnamon roll heroes recently, but I have more than what I listed in the video. Um, so let me go look at my list real quick. I just have to pull it up. I do love a cinnamon roll. Me too. <laughs> to eat and a hero. <laughs> both, both are good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I know a couple that I listed. Uh, like there's Gaming Great Grace by Piper J. Drake. I really liked. That was a forced proximity with a cinnamon roll, like tech. Uh, I don't know if he was a CEO or not, but like he runs a tech company sort of situation. Uh, that was a really fun one. I liked the force proximity. It was a little weird because they're on a cruise ship and that's a little weird right now. 
Um, I mean, I read it earlier <laughs> into this situation and I was like, mm, okay, that's interesting. Uh, and then one I already wrecked, which white whiskey bargain, actually, you know, we've got that cinnamon roll here or there. Um, and then where, who else do I have? Uh, Blind Date with a Book Boyfriend by Lucy Eden is a short story with a cinnamon roll hero. They're hard to find. They are. <laughs> and a really, like, I'm looking for, like, a very specific subset of cinnamon roll heroes, I feel like. Oh, um, Eva Lee's, what is that book called? Is it my fake break or? The first one. Is that my fake break? Yeah. Yes. So Eva Lee is my fake break. That's totally a cinnamon roll hero, I feel like. He was totally it's a new role here. <laughs> yeah, and I really liked him too. I don't know why I forgot him. Um, but yeah, that's on the spot, that's the best I can do. Yeah, these are great. I just got the proper correct book. So. <laughs> <laughs> so this is awesome. So tell us where you can find you online. Sure. Um, so I'm on YouTube at Happy For Now. It's my channel. You'll find me posting like three days a week right now. A uh, variety of content, 99% is romance-based, um, occasional other genres thrown in there, of course. I'm also on Instagram at HFN underscore books. And then I'm on Twitter at Lee, Le, the, hold on, words. I'm on Twitter at Le Petit General, uh, or you can also go follow Spark Joy Romance on Twitter and see all of the stuff we do over there. I love this. Thank you. You see mm-hmm. perfectly on the show. Yes, absolutely. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, rate, and review the show. This is the easiest way to support this podcast. Once you connect with fellow romance readers and make new friends, get weekly book recommendations, attend monthly meetups, then join our Patreon community. You can join at whatreadnextblog.com slash Patreon. Romance lovers, check out Queen Bee Reads Etsy shop for cute and comfortable bookish apparel. The shop also features social justice apparel and fun items from some of your favorite TV shows like The Shit Squeaks and The Alphas. Use code WATRY10 to save. Visit whatreenextblog.com slash queenbeereads. What to Read Next Podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Discover new podcasts to love on frolic.media slash podcast. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.